premise behind this project was to look at how we could green grey assets that have to remain grey for their primary function. This is called greening the grey and it's an overlooked area in green infrastructure policy. We're looking at how can you green things like sea walls um, to make them more multifunctional, to provide habitat for ecology and improve the ecosystem services they provide for society. Being able to work with the Scottish Wildlife Trust has been such a new and exciting opportunity for me. Teaching primary age students and secondary age students about their shoreline in Edinburgh and about climate change, sea level rise and habitat loss and how we're trying to combat that by building and enhancing new habitat for these animals on sea walls and on the shoreline has been exciting and the kids really seem to be engaged with it as well. I'm Ellie from Craig Royston and it was quite interesting how you get sand, cement, water and stone and mix them all together and you make concrete with that. So I got involved in this project because of my experience with concrete casting. So my responsibility has been to create the formwork as well as cast all the concrete tiles. And as part of this I had to uh, develop a new design where we used uh, fabric for mark and this is for lichen to grow on and we also developed some previous designs and all together we made four different concrete tiles. Working on the Living Landscape project has been a really exciting experience for me. I've been able to work with the Scottish Wildlife Trust and the Royal Botanic Gardens of Edinburgh. So that means working with a, a team of people and across a partnership on a real world issue. So as a PhD student, I don't normally get to work with such a wide team. And I've also been able to take kids out and look at the nature that's on their doorstep in Edinburgh. Art Ecology's involvement um, in the NERG project, working with the Wildlife Trust and the Botanical Gardens and Glasgow University, is to design and deploy artificial structures in the intertidal for the colonisation uh, by marine organisms. And these are called vertipools. They have a hollow in the, in the top which will collect uh, um, tidal water between the tides and a textured surface um, designed to be colonised and um, we will see how they perform here just as we're seeing how they perform in the Isle of Wight and in the Solent. This has been a great example of an Edinburgh Living Landscape project and it's contributed to our wider Edinburgh Shoreline project. Um, so through this we've engaged with primary and secondary schools and with a whole range of volunteers who've helped with installation and we've engaged with the public demonstrating um, the potential to make the shoreline biodiverse and to think of the shoreline as part of the green infrastructure of the city. So not only that, but we've also left a legacy which will be subject to research by Glasgow University and the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh. Another important reason to green the grey is due to the increasing urbanisation at the coast coupled with rising sea levels. This means that important coastal habitats are getting squeezed. So where we build hard structures, if we optimise them to improve their multifunctionality through adding habitats for species, we can hopefully help maintain some of the essential ecosystem services as we live with an increasingly stormy coast. <laughs>